Hello. Uh, so uh, in this recording, we're going to start our new unit on visual and perceptual uh, paradoxes. Um, this is a very short unit, so it's only a week long. Uh, we have one worksheet today and one wor worksheet um, on Friday, along with our uh, unit quiz on statistics. Once we're done with this week, uh, next week we have a whole new unit on infinity and infinitesimal paradoxes. So th these are very short units. Uh, we're not going to have individual quiz on these units. Um, instead, uh, on finals week, which is about uh, two weeks from today, uh, we're going to have a uh, comprehensive quiz that kind of covers all the units that we've covered so far, uh, and also including uh, visual paradoxes and also the, the last unit, infinity and infinitesimal paradoxes. Uh, outside of those units, um, you are now already assigned a paradox to research and write a worksheet on. So um, for that project, you're going you're gonna to need three parts to it. So you're going to have to do your research and the write-up of explanation of the, your um, paradox along with uh, its resolution with citations. Uh, and then another piece that you're going to uh, submit is going to be the worksheet that kind of goes along with uh, your paradox and introduces um, people to uh, your paradox uh, and do some kind of activity um, that's inspired uh, or some, something insightful towards the, the paradox itself um, and then some come to some kind of conclusion. And along with that, some um, instructions on the activity so so if the instruction if, if the activity is pretty simple that doesn't need to be long um, but if it's if it's like a game or something uh, it's gonna involve more and more instructions all of those uh, are going to be due uh, on Friday next week um, so, so, so that's that's coming I will also post a rubric uh, that I'm going to be using to evaluate your um, the Paradox project. So uh, you should take a look at that. But other than that, let's, um, let's jump right to the worksheet uh, for today. Uh, today's per, uh, worksheet is going to have a lot of multimedia um, clips. So, so there's going to be uh, YouTube links, uh, there's going to be pictures, and there's some audio clips as well. It's going to be a fun one, I think. Um, so let's jump right to it. Um, let's see. You're going to need the, the worksheet open. And I think uh, you'll need a calculator for the first part as well. So you can go grab that if you need to. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so the first um, paradox is kind of like what kind of goes against your gut feelings. So it's a geometry problem, but um, it kind of, it's easy to get tricked uh, just by the perception of it. So let's say you have a rope that's laid across the entire equator of Earth. Uh, it's incredibly long. It's about 131 and a half uh, million feet in length. Um, and the question asks, how much extra length of rope do you need uh, to take that rope and lift it one foot off the ground uh, all the way around the earth um, while uh, still going around? <clears throat> so uh, first write down, like, what do you think the gut feeling? Like, what's about how much more uh, rope do you think you'll need? Um, so you can write down that here. Um, and let's, let's now like go off our gut feelings and use like mathematical formulas to actually compute it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's, um, let's work at it. So we already have the circumference of the earth. So that's 131,479,000. Thousand uh, seven hundred and thirteen feet. So that's the radius of Earth. 
sorry, that's the circumference of the Earth. Um, so that's that's our C, um, and using that we can actually compute the radius of Earth. So I mean, we can Google that, but we could also compute it. So let's. Um, compute the radius of Earth. So we just, to solve for R here, we just have to take this, our C and divide by two pi. So let me compute that. So that's about 20,925,646.24 feet. Okay. So this is the radius of the Earth, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to add one foot to the radius. So, so we're going to have the rope, the new circle that's going around Earth, is foot off the ground. So it's radius of one foot larger. Um, so the new radius is pretty much exactly the same. except not 646.24, it's 647.24 feet. Okay. And uh, the new length of the rope around the earth is going to be, uh, so once we have the new radius, we can get the new circumference by multiplying by two pi. So we just take this number and multiply by two pi, and I get 131,479,719.3 feet. So it's actually very close to what we had before. Okay, pretty much all of it is the same, except the last digit, uh, three, is changed into 9.3 feet. So it's only uh, 6.3 feet, I guess. Um, actually, it should be more like 6.28 um, feet, uh, because it turns out that you only need two pi feet more to increase the radius by one foot, no, no matter what, what the radius of the earth is. So um, I think, uh, so good job if you knew that by gut feeling beforehand. Um, but I think most people, um, their initial guess is much, much larger because earth is a large thing. Feels like you'd have to add much more to increase the radius. But it turns out it's, it's actually not that much. It's a little over six feet. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I hope you've, you had fun with that one. I think there's a homework question that's uh, close to that um, about going around the equator, the uh, sun. <clears throat> okay, so here's uh, a different visual paradox. That this one bothered the hell out of me for, for a really long time. Um, so you have, uh, you have this triangle, so it, it's superimpose on top of the grid so you can actually measure the area. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen boxes uh, long and one, two, three, four, five boxes high. <clears throat> so you have this triangle uh, and then you can divide up into uh, these four pieces. Um, so smaller right triangle and even smaller right triangle and two uh, L-shaped pieces uh, that's in slightly different shape. And you can rearrange the shapes uh, on the right. So you see the, the four shapes appear here, one, three, and two. And um, if you, you could take a moment to check that all of these pieces are the same shape as it was on the left picture. It's laid off, laid out on top of the same triangle, um, except 
it's missing a square right there. So does that mean cutting the pieces up, rearranging, and reassembling changes the area? So I mean, is this one area smaller than it was before? Um, so that's, that's the paradox here. I think uh, I am not going to spoil the answer here, so try to think about why why that happens here. Um, here's a kind of visual picture version of it. So if you control click, you can go to the uh, link here. Um, let me share that. <clears throat> Okay, so um, using a similar principle, look how um, you can eat infinitely many chocolate by rearranging. So you could try to think about what is happening um, with this picture. It's pretty much the same principle here. Um, <clears throat> So um, try try to figure out um, what's what's happening here and why is this losing an area or maybe you can gain an area by and eat off that extra area in the chocolate. Can you do that in real life? Um, <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next uh, paradox. So this this is a music video by um, the group OK Go. Uh, and the, the name of the song is called The Writing on the Wall. It's, it's a good song, I think. Um, and I want you to listen to it. Uh, but this music video has lots of different visual paradoxes, something that doesn't appear to be what it, what it seems. Um, and um, I can't play it on this video clip because I, I think I'm going to upload these lecture videos on YouTube and I don't want to get content ID'd. Uh, but please, uh, pause this video and, and, and control click this link uh, and watch the video. And wh while you watch it, um, try to write down, you don't have to keep track of uh, what type of paradox is, but um, try to keep a count on how many, how many visual tricks they use in the video. So please uh, pause the video and try it. And um, after you're done, um, let's move on. So it's a good, good song, right? Here's a couple of um, uh, classic shading paradoxes. Um, so uh, let me introduce this one here. So you have a checkerboard floor here um, and, and the cylinder that's ca casting a shadow. So you have uh, two tiles, A and B. So A appears to be in a darker shade um, tile floor space, uh, and B appears to be uh, on a lighter uh, tile uh, in a floor, but it's in the shade uh, of, the, of the cylinder. Um, <clears throat> and it seems like uh, one is darker than the other, and I, th I think most people would agree that A seems darker than B. I know it's on a shadow, but it's, it's actually, um, but it actually is exactly the same shade, um, which is weird. But um, this this goes along with um, uh, how we perceive uh, color uh, in our brain, um, and our brain automatically uh, adjusts for shadow, uh, and um, you get the impression of what the true color should be if you adjust for that. Um, and it really does seem like B is, is a lighter color to me, but it's, it's actually the same. Uh, if you hide everything else and look at it, it's the same shade. And something similar is happening here. If you look at this picture, um, you have a darker, uh, it, it kind of looks like a laptop is facing away from us. Uh, and then on the top panel, it seems to be a darker shade. And uh, the lower panel looks like a white. Um, but it's in the shade. Uh, if you actually compare the 
the shade, the shade of the gray that's on the main part of the, the two panels, it's actually the exact same shade. Um, and it's a little bit easier if you kind of hide away the middle part. Uh, this gray is exactly the same shade of gray as here. Um, <clears throat> and this doesn't just happen with uh, uh, different degrees of gray. It happens with colors as well. So uh, this picture uh, on the left, um, I think many people have uh, seen because it's a, it's a picture that went viral uh, a few years back. I don't know, I think about five years or so. Um, and uh, you see a certain pair of colors. So uh, you either see a black and blue uh, dress or white and gold dress here. So um, what is so unreal is if you, if you have um, family members or roommates who can show this to, please compare. And it's, it's so weird when, when they disagree. Uh, to me, this looks like a black and blue dress. And I think most people do. But some people, uh, when they see this, see a white and gold dress. Um, uh, so I, I think um, that the main reason why this happened uh, is, is because, again, the brain is uh, correcting for color. Um, so, so people who see uh, blue and black uh, dress see this picture as uh, it's in a washed out uh, lighting. Um, it's very bright. Um, and then you see, uh, so the, the blue and the black part is, is being a little bit faded. Uh, if you see uh, white and uh, gold, I think you uh, perceive this image as it's in the, it's in a poor lighting, it's, it's in the shade. Um, and I, th I think uh, the white part looks shadowy. So maybe uh, that's, the shadow blue that, that you see on white gold dress is uh, the shadow blue that, um, that I see as ink uh, on the dress. Um, so, so even though we're looking at the exact same picture, depending on how your brain perceives what's happening in the picture, you see completely different thing, um, which is amazing. Um, so uh, black and blue uh, or white and gold appears here as well. Uh, so this, this is, in this case, it's a sandal. I, th I think, uh, so I think, I think the pair of the color that people see is the same, uh, but I wonder if any of you see white and gold in one of these pictures and see black and blue in the other, uh, or maybe you see the same on both pictures. Uh, this last picture is a different pair of colors that, that people see. Uh, I think the, the two, um, to first uh, look at it and try to see what color this uh, picture is. Um, so you either see it as uh, gray and mint color, I think, uh, or uh, pink and white shoes. Uh, I personally see it as pink and white, and I think that's in the minority. I think most people see it as a gray and mint color shoes. So that's another one of those things. Um, try to see if you can find uh, who sees it an opposite color. Okay. Um, so here's another set of visual paradoxes where depending on what you your mindset, you could see this in, in two different ways. So each of these pictures could be interpreted in a couple different ways, um, which changes the picture quite a bit. Um, I have another, uh, another one or the other type of uh, a video, but this is an audio um, situation. So uh, there's a football player, Gino Smith, um, who uh, on a coin toss calls uh, heads uh, and referee immediately says, okay, heads. Um, 
but uh, some people who watched the exact same video uh, sound, sounded like Gina Smith said tales. Um, and there were a lot of comp complaints and controversy, but everybody who was actually there uh, agrees it's heads. Uh, and I think most people hear heads, but um, some people hear tails. So let's actually look at that video. So I think I'll click on this and share the video. Okay, so let's see that again. Okay. So w what did you hear? Um, did you hear heads uh, or tails? Um, I, I hear tails, um, but uh, I think most people hear heads. So let me know uh, what you hear there. I think it's amazing to me that heads and tails are the two things people hear. I know the brain is expecting one or the other, so we're pre-programmed to try to interpret one way or the other. Um, but it's 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 wild um, that I, I hear tales, but uh, a, lot, a lot of people actually what is what it's supposed to be is heads. Um, and um, this this is just kind of bonus uh, clips. Um, you so I, I'm not going to play them, uh, but there's four videos made by a uh, uh, Japanese artist um, that has impossible looking ball rolling, um, which is I, I think it's absolutely awesome. So please please watch them and enjoy. But that's that's it for uh, this worksheet. Um, I will see you Friday.